when when you're when it, when all is said and done, I would love it if someone sat down with you and and made maybe a book of all the things that Cuss taught you. I don't know. All those things that Cuss taught me would, and nowadays would not be cool. You know, in what way? I don't know. Um, Cuss was born in 1908. In 1908, they had a different opinion of people having opinions like women and stuff like that. And Cuss, Cuss believing that he cared for the downtrodden people and this and that for the blacks and Latinos and Irish people who who are being a, a, um, abused by the Irish people of that time, which is crazy. Um, he really, um, he really was that guy. He was the guy that fought for the people that that didn't have um, anyone to fight for them. He was just that guy. He wanted to be that person. He wanted to be a person that people looked up to, and he was the boss and stuff. He was he just wanted to be a person. And when I read his book and I ran, found out about him, he was successful his whole life. He was always the guy in the neighborhood that people came through to settle beefs and talk things over with and loan people stuff and help people out. And he liked being in that position of being able to teach people something, what he believed was teaching them something. But he knew so much about the human mind. Well, he, well, when he died, this is very interesting. We went died and then Camille that was at, um, that I lived with him and Camille. And she be quitting out and cleaning the room. And when I saw in this room, I saw all books about psychiatry and the mind and everything and mystic stuff and all that stuff. And I said, this is what he was really about. The, um, yeah, he just like, he believed he was a mystic believer as well. He believed in Zen and the art of archery and all that. He had those books. Mm-hmm. And he was just a believer in more than what we saw. Yeah. He knew it was more than what we could physical articulate going on with us as human beings or what we are called when you sit back and you think about your career and how fortunate you were to run into that guy i mean how how much did that play a, a, a part in your mind like when you knocked out trevor burbick became the youngest ever heavyweight champion when you're thinking about that we did you did you ever stop and think like man how lucky am i that i ran into that man no no he said he summons me he summoned you whoa Makes sense. I mean, you think about a man whose life work involved psychiatry, involved the mind, boxing, hypnosis, training all these boxers, Floyd Patterson, had all these great fighters, and then he wants one great one before it's over. And no, he, he summoned wants, you. No, he wants an animal. An animal. He summoned you. <sighs> what did that feel like for you? Does it make sense? No, I believe what he told me. Yeah. It it I mean, I don't know if I believe you could summon someone, but goddamn that seems like it's real. Yeah. That seems like it's real. I don't know, I think you can do whatever you believe you can do. If you really believe it. Yeah. Well that that was what I got out of all the things that I read about you and him together and t- being able to talk to you about you and him is that he, he gave you these tools to understand the way your mind worked, and you just ran with them. Um, I'm an extreme kind of person. Yeah, so I get carried away. If, if your confidence is not a, a, um, a delusional perspective, you don't have the right confidence. Yeah. You get so amped up, Mike. Even, even he's sitting here talking to you about these things. I could see it in you. You get amped up, even just talking about achieving things, talking about success, talking about the mind. You know, I could see it inside of you. You get very fired up about these things. Yeah. Um, I have to be serious about anything that I want to accomplish. Yeah, that intensity is what made you special. I mean, that... Uh, that I'm 